Hey everyone. Good good morning everyone. Good afternoon or good evening to where you're out in the world. This is Viper Strike 95 Flight Simulation and today this is leg five of our journey today. As yep, we're in the penultimate leg of our journey for today. We're back here at Budapest, and this one is going to be the longest leg of our journey yet. We're going to be following the railroad uh, all the way into Bucharest today. So this should be a pretty long journey for us. We'll be heading right back off from uh, where we're visiting here in Budapest. It's great to have you guys here today. I hope you're all doing really, really well. So today's flight plan um, is going to be... Let me pull this up. Here's today's flight plan. It's going to be this. I'm going to make it extra big. So here it is. Um, so we're going to take off here from Ferry Airport. We'll follow the railroad down through a couple of the uh, small towns. We'll be visiting quite a few of the cities here in the plains of Hungary including visit Osozolznik. Then once we go through here, we'll be crossing the border after Beska. We'll cross the border from Hungary into Romania. We'll be visiting quite a few towns here in the historic region of Transylvania. We'll be visiting Arad, Lipova. Lipova. We'll be visiting uh, Diva. All the way up across, we'll be visiting Right, more cities will go across here. Turn left, we'll be visiting, uh, go back down to the hills and valleys again to visit a place like Medias. Um, see, uh, Sigi Sora. Then we go down here, go across through the plains. We'll be going through more of it as well. And then from there, we'll be heading to one of Romania's biggest cities of. Uh, Brasov. Then from here, we'll be going through the uh, Southern Carpathians. We'll be going across the hills, um, make our way down through the valley, through into Campina and Pialsti, and then we'll make our landing here at, Hen at Henry Konada Con Air Airport, which is Bucharest's main international airport. So that is going to be on today's trip. 430 nautical miles is today's trip. Kingsman, great to see you here. And Super Typhon, it's always great to have you here as well. So the plan for today's trip, I wanted to still take something with autopilot. But I decided that I wanted to take uh, something faster for the trip. And I actually, it's an old favorite of mine. It is a Supermarine Spitfire. But this isn't just your average Supermarine Spit. Um... This is actually the Firefly Air livery done by Kanzui. This is Kanzui's first livery, by the way. And my goodness, it looks absolutely incredible. Now he's now there's two liveries that he's made for the Spitfire. The one is the uh, Spit Chrome, but as me as someone who wants to be more tasteful, I wanted to actually have the matte livery which is much more tasteful and it feels something like the normal spitfire pilot's wheeled walk way forward see all the different little uh things they put down not to be walked on walk away and board just i mean look at the details you have the liveries as well firefly air 100 octane as well. Just the symbols in this look awesome. But you can definitely see the detail they've done for this. It looks absolutely stunning. It's a stunning um, Supermarine Spitfire. It looks absolutely incredible. And I think you guys agree too. So, yeah. Basically, for all those who don't know, the, the Supermarine Spitfire is considered by many to be the most iconic, one of the most iconic planes um, during the World War II, used by the British Air Force, but also throughout uh, the British Empire during this time. It was produced by the Supermarine Corporation, 
um, back in 1936. It, it was introduced in service in 1938. Its most famous is obviously its uh, elliptical wings. This allowed it to not only get greater speed, but also have pretty good maneuverability. And in fact, they are most famous for the Battle of Britain, which, which, um, which allowed the Spitfire to compete against the Measurements and win. Thus, they had a higher victory to loss ratio compared to the Hurricanes due to their amazing performance. And after the Battle of Britain, it became the primary principal aircraft of the RAF Fire Command. It was used by not just the European theater, but also the, in the Mediterranean, Pacific, and Southeast Asian theaters. The pilots love flying this thing. And it's popular for not just as a fighter, but interceptor, photo reconnaissance, and even as a traitor, all the way to the 50s. Powered by an amazing... The Mark IX in particular is, is, is powered by the mighty uh, Merlin engine from Rolls-Royce. By the absolutely glorious Rolls-Royce... Um, Merlin engine. So there's lots of variants as well. But the but the Mark 9 is a legendary uh, play. It's also got a bubble canopy and everything too. It's just an absolute beauty of a World War II fighter. So you can get this plane from the Flying Iron website. Now for the liver, you need to be a member of the Firefly Air uh, Virtual Airline. Once you do, um, it should be in the website. So here you go. Close the door. Lock. I'm gonna go ahead and lock the door and everything. Oh, battery should be. Just gonna go ahead and get this on. Like I said, this thing doesn't. Boom, boom. Try and get this wobble pump working. The wobble pump is going to get this more fuel pressure. Just going to take me a second to get the fuel pressure working back in the Supermarine Spit. Okay. Um, we're going to go ahead, clear prop, clear prop, and we're going to go. Really? I think I'm doing something wrong. Like I said, I haven't started the normal Spitfire in a long time. I know they said it's a lot more finicky to start this thing. Something's a bit weird. <laughs> Checklist. Oh, we need to turn off the external tank. Uh -huh. Sorry if I'm not doing this right. <laughs> oh, this is oh, this is gonna be a long day.
I did everything properly. The carb air filter. Where's the carb air filter? Oh, you need to turn that off. Oh, come on. I'm guessing I'll have to do control E. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I, I, I didn't follow the steps how to do it. I just, uh, I don't like to do control E to start the plane. So yeah, we're, uh, we got, we managed to get started. I did control E, but oh well. So yeah, if you guys want to join in, I'm on Lima Hotel Bravo Papa at Verhege Airport. Uh, I'm on East USA server. So we're gonna go ahead and get this back to the movie taxi bike. It's good to have you guys here. It's nice to be back on Wednesday. Um, so I've been very lucky to not have the CTD issues that everyone else is having. On one hand, I'm lucky that I don't get CTDs. On the other hand, I feel really bad because so many people get CTDs and yet I have been avoiding the CTDs, which is really weird. get off it wouldn't be nearly much of an issue so I am gonna turn on the extended tank uh, external tank after all this is about 400 nautical miles I want to actually get enough range so you're gonna pull the thing back like I said be careful be patient It makes me wonder how the mesh equipment would handle. Good question. I'm not really a warbird expert, but... And we're off in Spitfire, guys. We made it, now we're off. Now we're, we're gonna head our way into Hungary, but before we get going, just gonna go ahead and fly around the airport for a bit. Just get a closer look at uh, Frihiki International in Budapest. Unfortunately, I don't have any sceneries. I know this is default scenery.
there's that. So there we go. So let's go back to the autopilot settings. So we're gonna go ahead and head our way over to, um, we're gonna head over to the town of uh, Vexis, Vexis, and we'll get back to the railroads. Though I still have this question though, um, my desktop idle is going through my mic. Which is weird, uh, that shouldn't be happening. Hello there, today I'll- Obviously have my- So I'm, I just, it's going to take me a second, I'm trying to get these uh, sound settings. So I think I try to get these soundtrack things to get fixed. So it's good to have you guys here. So we'll be visiting um our first city coming up, um, which is about to come up soon. Is going to be the city of Souls Knock. Um, it's our first city of of our visit.
So this city is pretty famous in this area for being uh, the county seat of Zsa's Nakikun Solnik County in Hungary. Um, it's a very, it's located on the banks of the Zara River in the heart of the Great Hungarian Plain, which made this made the city a important cultural and economic crossroads for centuries. It's also home to one of the best water polo teams in, in a country famous for water polo, by the way. A brief, hip, a brief history of this place. Um, it was the earliest settlements were by the Roman, by the Celts and all that. The Romans unfortunately didn't have any permanent establishment in the area. In the Middle Ages, the Hungarians came around during this timeline and settled here, and then it became part of the Ottoman Empire during the when the Ottomans invaded. Sultanate Castle was very important during historical times. After the Ottomans came around, um, the castle was burned down, and the city struggled um, until it prospered back in the second half of the 18th century due to steamship traffic. In the 20th century, it saw it saw action in the First World War in 1919 by the Hungarian Red Army and the Romanians. After the war, um, they tried to rebuild this place. It has been repaired. World War II, the the city was bombed 12 times. Um, and then after World War II, um, most of the people have fled when the Soviets came around. And during the socialist era, the city began to recover with Soviet aid. Factories were built, and there, thus there would be more tourists thanks to a thermal bath. And now it's been granted as a city in 1990. Some of the main sites include the, including the local thermal bath, a beer museum, and the Museum of Hunger, Hungarian Inter Aviation can be found here. There's also a goulash festival here too. And, and there have been few people that are born here, but mainly um, Fenric Antias, the founder of the BMW Diesel Development Center, Hungarian singer Fenric Molnar, and finally the inventor of the high performance liquid chromatography, uh, Kosova Horbath, were famous people that were born here in Solzhenitsyn. I was muted? Can you guys hear me now? Or am I still muted? Uh. 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 Can you guys hear me now? I'm super sorry, guys. Really? Uh... Oh, no. What did I do this time? What did I do this? Great, I messed things up again. Uh, uh can you guys hear me now? I guess. Um, this is weird. What a weird way.
Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. So my main issue was trying to, because I kept hearing my desktop audio kept getting into my mic. Okay, let me continue with the slide. Okay. So, so Zolnik, um, is our main place. Um, it was very important as a cultural and economic crossroads for a century here in the Great Hungarian Plain. Uh, home to one of the best water polo teams. Um, it's well known for its castle uh, in the Middle Ages, and it became a major market town during the Arapat dynasty of the Hungarians. The town was destroyed during the Mongol invasion in 1241, but it was repopulated under Hungarian king Bela, Bela IV. During the Hungarian era, uh, Ottoman era, Solzic Castle became an important border castle to deal with the Ottomans. However, uh, the Ottomans took over this territory from 1552 to 1685 until the Hasbers uh, brought it back into the Hungarian rule. Though, uh, it prospered again back in the second half of the 18th century with steam trains and all that. In the 20th century, um, at this point, uh, it was it was occupied by the Romanians and the Hungarian Red Army until 1920. Solzic was built in 1923. In the interwar period, most of the damage has been repaired. During World War II, it, this place was bombed 12 times by American troops, which caused serious damage to buildings. By the end of the war, the majority of the population had fled. During the Socialist era, it began to recover with uh, Soviet aid. Factories were rebuilt, and the, and the importance grew when the thermal bath opened, and it was granted a city in 1990. Its main sites include the thermal bath, a beer museum, and the Museum of Hungarian Aviation. Some notable people born here include Federic Onestens, which is the founder of the BMW Development Center, Sazaba Horbath, the chemical engineer and the inventor of the high performance liquid chromatography. In Olympic judo, uh, Hedvig Karnas. We're born here. So that's a bit about um, Sozolik. So, yeah, like I said, I'm very sorry for what happened uh, earlier with the whole thing. So, like I said, I was trying to get the slides. I try to get my. I try to get the uh, music. Try to get the music and the desktop audio to separate. I may need to do. I need to do more testing off screen. chat won't read a slide. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I really am sorry. It's hard to read trip trip because I got two monitors. So unless I can do a third one, unless I can put the slide in front of me, but I can't really see where I'm going, so. But thanks guys for pointing out. I'm like I said I'm just... Sometimes I get tunnel vision I'm focused not paying attention. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, here's the pictures. Bye bye. But beautiful today here in the Hungarian plain. Definitely some beautiful flying here.
so I hope you guys are doing well this week. Um, I know Merce, Merce with a family event, so he's going to be off Wednesday and Thursday. So I hope I can give you guys the best entertainment I could um, for this week. Don't want to crash. So, so there's Sonolik, and the, and over here is the inner is the airport. Um, this there's Dougal and Spit. There you are, Dougal. I see you. So further into this direction here um, is the airport here, Sonolik. Which is actually home to the Hungarian Air Base. It's actually a Hungarian Air Base there. For the Hungarian Air Force. time over in Africa with Merce crew. We visited uh, Mount Kenya, uh, Africa's second tallest mountain after uh, Kilimanjaro. So got to see a little bit of Lake Victoria, which was, which by the way, if you guys have ever seen Lake Victoria, it's it's absolutely huge. Victoria is Africa's biggest lake. But yeah, it's a beautiful day out here. The old Hungarian plains. Some bit of background between the Great Hungarian Plain, uh, known as the Alfort or Great Alfort. Um, this plain uh, encompasses much of modern Hungary. It's the largest part of the wider Pannonian Plain. Um, it covers nearly 52,000 square kilometers. In oh, toxic temps. Uh, 420, good to see. You. What airport are you landing at? Well, um, it's going to be a whole 400 uh, nautical mile journey. We're actually taking off from, uh, we took off from uh, Herhenji Airport, and we're actually in all the way in, Bu in Bucharest today. So, but we're following the Orient Express, so we're going to be going across the railroad into, into Budapest. So yeah, it's good to have you here. So we're just following around the railroad. And we're going, right now we're across the Great Hungarian Plain, which is around 20,000 square miles of territory, which is nearly 56% of the total area uh, in, of and around. It features a lot of cultural festivals around uh, Hungary, like the Goulash Festival and, and more. And there's even a few major people born in this area, like Zoltan Bay, Janos Irino, a Hungarian ke uh, chemist who invented the noises and knockables and match. And Frigis Korina, who, invent who is a plumologist and, pul and pulmonary. Effect. But yeah, this has been around for, for thousands of years. Are you on live weather? I am not on live weather. Oh, I'm on live players and I'm on East USA server. I'm not on live weather, but I am on, I am on all players. I'm on all players, not just live, but all players. But I'm not on live weather. 
I'm actually, I, I customized the, um, Bob. Oh, look at this. You have APRs in here in the P51 Mustang. Google and then our Spitfire. Awesome job, guys. I've seen the pics, I, if you've seen the pics I sent you this for, then you can see Kilimanjaro 134 miles per Yeah, you mentioned that on your stream. Okay, the closest place I'm, I'm top of is Lima Hotel Golf Alpha. Mm. Yeah, the closest airport, if you notice on my top right of my screen, um, are the closest airports to where we're at. It's a little program used for streaming. So if you look at the top right of my screen, um, it should show the closest airports. And and this will give you a link to those airport, the closest airport. So you can just type it in while we fly. Hey Guybrush, good to see you. Now guys, I know I'm gonna give Guybrush shout outs, but guys, if you've never seen Guybrush's videos, he makes some awesome YouTube content. Would I be able to see you on Xbox? Absolute Tox attempts, yes, you would absolutely see me on the Xbox. Um, absolutely, you guys would be seeing me 100%. I mean, it's cross-compatible with Microsoft on PC. So yes, absolutely, you could see me on Xbox. Absolutely. So, um, I'm part of the organization known as Firefly Air. Um, this is the me, Two Tone Murphy's official virtual airline for the Two Tone Murphy community. And, I mean, it's an awesome uh, community here. Awesome community. Firefly Air is completely free. Um, and you can fly any type of plane you want on any route around the world. We can do, we got our own economy system and all that more. And we're developing more and more over time. Uh, all you have to do is three easy steps. Um, submit a pile application, sign up for the free FS Hub account, which is completely free. Then go into the uh, airline page. It should be on your top left. I know that's crew portal, but right there should be a pilot application. Just click that. And you're all set. Just wait for Tutor Murphy to Discord. And then once you do that, um, then go to step two. Download this amazing program called the Landing Rate Monitor. And LRM basically is it not only tracks your landing rates, but if you combine this with FS Hub, you can use it as a logbook. And it's way better than the one we have in the It also features GPS tracking, cabin announcements, and even a route planner, which is what I'm doing for my fleets. And the third and final step is FSGUIPC or XPUIPC, depending on if you want to use it on Microsoft or XPlane. However, he did mention Bob Allen, who is the main guy at FS Hub. In the future, we may not even need FSP, uh, uh, we, it's no longer going to be needed FSUIPC because it's going to be implemented in SimConnect. And then finally for step four, and yes, Xbox pilots can actually be part of this. Yes, you guys an Xbox, You actually, there's actually some a VA for you Xbox pilots out there. Um, for you Xbox pilots, once you sign up, you can go to the crew portal like this and you go to your crew page um, you can click in this manual pyro click and look at this manual pyro you can do your call sign um, set what plane you used let's say I did a 747 flight uh, 747-800 I took off here from Dublin Echo India Delta Whiskey and I landed at uh, 
my local international airport, Fuel Sierra Delta Foxtrot, Santa Cruz Airport. Pick my arrival date, my arrival time, and you put remarks. And once you get all that, you just submit it to your virtual pyrop and it will be sent and all that. Oh, where's your in-game name? Oh, let me go over game attack. Yeah, Fiber Strike 9510, uh, talk to temps. Um, after we get holidays, I'm back to work next vid. Um, gonna be work hard on this one because this senior is definitely bad. Oh, 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 I wonder what that's gonna be, Guybrush. Um, good question. But yeah, but that means there is something for everyone. Xbox players can be part of it, uh, PC players, you got. It's something that all sorts of people can be part of, and that, I think that's fantastic. Um, so the next point we're going to be visiting um, is going to be the city known as... Um, it's... It's Beskaba, the Casa... Beke uh, Tolba, something like that. But it's actually a city with county rights in southeast Hungary. It's located on the Great Hungarian Plain. Uh, it, its name actually comes from the Sasaba, which is popular name given to boys of Turkic origin. Well, Bekas refers to the county name Bekas, which means peaceful. So it means peaceful boy. Peaceful Turkish boy was the name of it. But it's actually been around since ancient times. Was, um, but the Hungarians did not become part of it until the 13th century. In the 1330s, uh, it, it remained deserted as as late as 1715. Um, World War I brought a lot of suffering in the town because it was under the Romanian occupation. Between the two World Wars and recession caused a lot of unemployment. Um, the railway station was bombed in 1944, and during socialist times, it became one of the most important centers of food industry here in Hungary. So, it became a pretty major town on uh, itself. So, there is Pescava. Oh, I need to actually... I need to keep track. Okay. So, Pescava is going to be over here. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice that this thing now is a tablet. So, it's much more easier for me to do my... Look at this. I mean, isn't this delivery just amazing? Oh yeah, and by the way, um, once you join Firefly Air, um, if you're on PC, unfortunately, it's only for PC, but you get some of these really cool deliveries uh, from Firefly on the website. On the Tutor American website, you, you're, on the downloads, you get all sorts of really cool stuff if you're on PC. Unfortunately, there's no way we can get Xbox, but there has been plans we're going to do it. But there's some awesome deliveries for us. We've got the cargo firefly air delivery for the 73700, the passenger variants. We have one for the Phase A320, two different Spitfire liveries, the Cessna 172 livery. We have a livery for the 146, the Just Flight 146, and the set in the middle of this Cessna. So we have some cool, yeah, it is an absolute awesome one. Can Zoom work on this one? It looks absolutely incredible. So there's Becky Scava. Yeah, this is the small city. Um, yeah, the, the reason I'm such a hard time trying to pronounce his name is this is Hungarian. And if you never know about Hungarian, it is an extremely difficult language to learn. And here's more, there's the railway. So there's the railway station, should be connecting us soon, through the Great Hungarian Plain. Yeah, it, it, like I said, it's a very beautiful library. I love the look of this thing. It is amazing. And I mean, it looks great outside too, um, through the Hungarian Plain. But I think the real pretty stuff is when we get into Romania. Because the route for today, we're going to go through a lot of hills and stuff throughout our visit to Transylvania.
that's where we're gonna get the real important stuff today. So yeah, it's great to have everyone back. Um, I hope you guys have had an okay week. I hope you guys have also done your best to manage the whole CTD problems. Everyone seems to have CTD problems. Murph, Allison's group, two cats. Um, a lot of people have this. But here's the thing, from my end, I actually am very lucky. I don't have CTDs. I'm I'm actually very lucky on it. I haven't had an in, in-flight CTD in I don't know how long. I don't remember. In all my hours flying, I don't have CTD problems. Which is really weird, considering there are so many people that actually have CTD problems. pretty crazy so yeah I'm just I'm lucky I don't know if I I, I on one hand I'm very, very lucky to not have any of the issues that a lot of you guys are having but on the other hand it makes me feel really bad that for all the especially that I don't see CDDs it makes me feel really bad no CDD for me but I report some airport footage ah that's doing well as usual so uh, let's, let's just, Oh, by the way, if you guys actually do want to get along, there's another way you guys can join. Um, if, once you follow my channel, uh, I do have a Discord, by the way. I do I do a lot of my incoming flight like, content and all that. So definitely check out my Discord. So, um, so we're going to be going through the next destination. We're actually going to cross the border into Romania. We're going to visit um, Arad which is actually the third largest city in Western Romania. And Romania is the fourth largest city with a population of 159,000. Um, it's a very busy transport hub through the Merge River and an important cultural and industrial center here in Romania. Particularly, it's home to the, one of the first music conservatories in Europe, early as normal schools in the continent, and the first car factory in both Hungary and present-day Romania. It's, a, it's major of a seat of a Romanian Orthodox Church Archbishop, its multicultural heritage is owed to the fact that it's been part of many different states over its, over its lifespan, including the Hungarians, Ottomans, Austro-Hungarian Empire, and Marne, Romania, with its, with its populations of Hungarians, Germans, Jews, Serbs, Bulgaria, and Romani. Of course, there's lots of popular architecture, including, including its own Savaki Theater, the Administrative Palace, and the Red Church, were all built during this period here in Romania. Hey, paparazzi, good to have you here. Haven't been able to start a flight here in Dublin. Uh, I'm not sure if it's the airport or aircraft. Some people have an issue, uh, some people have an issue with um, Dublin Airport. However, I have never had any issues with Dublin, actually. I've not had any major crash issues in Dublin. I've not had any issues um, in Dublin. I, I mean, everyone's is different, so I don't really know what your thing is. Ah, awesome you joined the Discord, Guybrush. Yeah, but it's great to have you Discord, and I think we're about to cross the border between um, Magyarzog and Romania. So yeah, we just crossed the border into Romania, guys. We're going to be visiting the city of Arad today. We'll definitely check around uh, Arad for a little bit, for a sec. Yeah, I, if it's the airport, I would probably... Luckily, there is another airport you can do. Which is really unfortunate. Like, Dublin's had some issues, so... I'm hoping that gets fixed at some point. I never had any issues with it, but... Like I said, every sim is different, and every single program is different. So, that's the major issue. This sim is so complex that even the little changes to your system is a big deal. Yeah. Is someone know a good livery maker? Oh, there's a lot of good ones. Um, Firefly Air has a lot of really good livery makers. Um, Kinzui, Cyrus P, and uh, Renoi make a lot of good liveries for the airline. I'm gonna try to reverse it from Dundee to Dublin. Oh, okay. Okay, good luck there, paparazzi. So fun with us, there's USAPR. We have Google who's flying amazing today. Look at this. Oh man. I don't have your, I don't have the, the airplane have a P-51 though. Like I said, if I'm buying planes, 
I'm most likely getting planes that I, I know I'm going to Just, just being honest, that's what I'm wearing. That's what I do. So yeah, um, Merv already said in his news today, um, he went through a couple news. So, um, some news that I want to talk about. Um, now, Fabio has got the P737-800 uh, as well as um, Chewy. Fabio actually said that he actually liked the 800 more than the 700. Which I think is good news because uh, for me, I'm definitely getting my hands on the 800 model. It's the most popular 737 model, so I'm absolutely getting my hands on it. So, um, India Fox Echo has finished up their work on their Aramachi N346, which is Italy's new trainer. So that, that should definitely be very exciting. Um, oh, and here's a big one for you guys. You know the Cessna 172 steam gauge? So, if you haven't seen um, any of Captain Arash's streams or Scruffy Tams, both are awesome people, you guys should definitely check them out on their channels. Well, they, well the, the WB Sim mod just finally came out on the Just Flight store. Um, which turns this 172 into almost a study level plane. And you can get this for 22 bucks. So if you like to take the Cessna 172 and uh, make it as close to realistic, to reasonably realistic, it's definitely a great mod. I've seen both Rash fly it. Oh, and OK Do showing off. Oh yeah, I did get the notification. So OK Do, um, he's showing off the um, camp out thing for uh, Parallel 42. Parallel 42 made some fantastic content, by the way. They made the not only they make the really cool um, career mode Skype mark, but they also made the absolutely insanely awesome kit box. One of my absolute favorites in the entire sim. I love the kit box. Man. It's such a great one. But now they came out with a brand new. Um, it's called the Bush Plane Campout. Um, is a is their new product. Um, it's coming to, it's going to be coming soon, um, for $7.99, uh, U.S. dollars. For s it's coming up for seven, uh, eight U.S. dollars as well. Um, it, fe it, it features a whole camp out set with including, uh, recreated cabin, fully equipped outhouse. It has a custom made windstock. Uh, custom ground treatments, plottable objects, custom soundscape, uh, and it has. And here's my favorite highlight: Pe pineapple and pizza is not permitted on site. Yes, that is definitely an amazing scenery. It's gonna come out on the marketplace soon. But yeah, for eight bucks for your bush pine needs, that's awesome. That would. I wonder if Jefferson worked out. Best part for camp up, you can use it anywhere in any plane that in any plane that includes a Gigna. Yes. So this is AWOD Romania. This is our first uh, city here in the country. So yeah, um, as soon as we get further in the journey, I'll talk about more information about uh, Romania. Make sure don't crash. But actually, there's something really cool about um, this thing. I watched a little bit of uh, OK New Stream. So, so apparently you can actually customize the scenery by putting like different campsites and everything. Yes, custom made campsites. Which is really, really cool. And you can do your own camp stuff. I mean, Parallel 4 and 2 have done some absolutely amazing things, so it makes me really happy that they continue to perform more work. So yeah, I can't wait to see what they uh, do for the future. And yeah, I also like the fact, no pineapple on pizza. I know a certain Irish guy wouldn't like it, but... But like I said before, pineapple on pizza is now the
So we're going to visit next is the place known as La Pova. Uh, La Pova is located in, like I said, back in, it's back in Arad County, uh, located in the region known as Benat, um, in the Benat region. Um, it's, it's, 34, it's 34 kilometers away from Arad, the capital of the county. It, it, it's first been reported back in 1315 under Litwa. It's been changed quite a few times. It's an important at the crossing road leading to Transylvania, but not in Wachia, aka place where Dracula actually came from. It's it's had a history of many vicissitudes as well. Many famous people have actually been around um, the area within the castle, around the local castle area, including John Huande, Matthias Corvus, one of the most famous Hungarians of all time, and John Sapova and more. Though it's been under dis uh, disputes with the Turks and Hungarians, and it finally became part of Romania as well. There's lots of tourist attractions here, include car industry, light industry, tourism, and more. So, quite a bit known, this small little town definitely has some really interesting characters. So yeah, we're on now. We're now on the banks of the Muras River. So there's the Muras. But definitely very pretty area. Yeah, we're gonna get into we're gonna get to some of the pretty stuff today. Thankfully, the rest of it isn't gonna be all plains. We're gonna have plenty of mountains. Like, I like pineapple inside of a rum. Yeah, pineapple's fine with rum and all that. Like, I actually drink pina coladas and that has pineapples. It's just a pizza, they're not the thing. I mean, if anyone who's ever watched my Murph line interview would probably know. I do not like pineapple on my pizza. So, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and discuss another thing as well. So Transylvania, um, now this has actually been a historically very important region around this, uh, this area of Europe. So Transylvania is currently a historical region in central Romania. Uh, it borders the Carpathian Mountains to the east and south, and to the west it borders um, Hung Hungary. It is, it is known for its iconic scenery in the Carpathian landscape and its very rich history. It's home to uh, Romania's third largest city of Cluj. Naponica, and it's also home to other cities and towns like Rossov, Sibilu, and Sigisola. Home to lots of uh, world heritage sites in Romania, like the villages with fortified churches, the historic center of Sigisola, and the Dacian fortresses of the Orostat Mountains. It first came to the rules part of the Dacian Kingdom, then it became part of Rome, then the Goths and Hunnics, Huns took over, then the Gepids, then the Avars, Slavs, the Bulgarians, and then for the longest period was conquered by the Hungarians all the way till 1918 when it became part of the, uh, become part of Romania thanks to the Treaty of Trianon. Then Northern Transylvania was given back to Hungary during the Second Vienna War, and then it was handed back to Romania after World War II, and it's still what it is today. Obviously in pop culture, it's commonly associated with lots of vampires. Though, in reality, uh, Transylvania was not really home to the dragon. Black Dracula actually came from Milwaukee, not Transylvania. We has homes with lots of mountains, and it's, and it's also gotten, it's rich in population, and not only has Romanians, but it also has a sizable Hungarian population as well. In fact, Hungarians make 17% 7, of the population, followed by 4% of the Romani, and the rest are tiny minorities of Ukrainians, Germans, and others. Of course, Transylvania is also rich in minerals like iron, lead, manganese, and gold. And there's also uh, automobile industry is a big deal, and more. And the culture of Transylvania is kind of complex due to its rich multicultural history. And there's tons of notable writers in all that. And of course, all the different uh, tourist attractions here. Dracula's Castle, known as Braun Castle, is one of them. The city of Brasov itself, the historic city of Sayasora film festivals, music festivals, and more. So yeah, just a little bit about Transylvania. I'm gonna turn off the autopilot and we're gonna go ahead and try and fly our way back into the hills and valleys. Here 
here in Transylvania. So yeah, I hope you guys are, are interested in this. I hope you guys are liking this so far. But yeah, we're getting to the real pretty areas here. But man, this area here is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I, I've been... If you guys recall, if you guys have been back in one of my earlier streams, I actually visited Romania back in, uh, in Halloween. We talked about Dracula. And we talked about the whole story about Dracula itself, how he came to be. And we talked about Vlad the Impaled, one of the most feared in Yes, very interesting. Oh yeah, Romania is a very interesting place. But yeah, I talked about the history of Dracula. And let me tell you, Vlad Dracula, he makes the movies uh, fictional Dracula look like an absolute sissy. I mean, some of his punishments were absolutely brutal, if you recall. They include uh, put them on crosses, stick nails in front of their head, and if you are especially unlucky, here's the worst fate of all. You get impaled. That's why it's called Vlad the Impaler. He literally impales people on sticks. It's brutal. And apparently it absolutely horrified the Ottomans when they came visit him. But, but Vlad the Impaler also is, is also considered to be a modern hero of Romania, too. So definitely a very interesting guy to do some research. So let's see who's flying with us still. We have Google McTavish. We have USAPR, I believe, somewhere in the back. But man, this is really pretty. But I'm gonna look at my fuel situation. Uh, my fuel situation, 26% on external tank. Definitely a very pretty area. Okay. So there's definitely some really cool and very interesting facts. Now, if you guys want to learn about some interesting facts about Romania, um, there's a couple of really cool facts about the country. First, Romania is home to the highest wooden church on the planet. It is the second largest wooden structure in Europe. It's known as the Perry Monastery, located in Maramunes, Romania. The church itself is nearly is 78 meters high, and its, and its cross is 7 meters high. It's one of the largest wooden structures in y'all of Europe. Um, another really cool from, uh, thing about Romania is Romania is world famous um, for the scenic Transfagarasen Road. Now, now, if you guys ever watched the British TV series Top Gear, um, they actually they actually travel through the uh, they test they look for the best roads. Him and me and Clarkson uh, argued for the best roads. So eventually they were discovered all around Europe for the best road, and then they discovered the Trans uh, Bagarsen Road, and it was built in the seventies as a strategic military route. But they found out it was actually considered by many to be the best road on the planet. I don't think we're going to visit there today, but definitely something interesting to talk about. Oh yeah, next is, well, Hunger, um, Romania's home to one of the world's largest buildings, um, um, the Romanian Administrative Building. We're going to be visiting there next week um, for our final leg. We're going to visit downtown Bucharest, so... But yeah, it's massive. 270 meters wide, 86 meters tall, 1,100 rooms, eight underground levels, a nuclear bunker, and more. They had to do tons of crystals, chandeliers, and, and lots of bronze and steel. Oh, here's another interesting Romania fact. Romania's 13th in the world in wine production, which is pretty crazy. But yeah, Romania actually has wine. Oh, 
and here's a fact a lot of people don't know about Romania that I think more people should know. We only took four race through since they had their every corner from every racetrack. Yes, that was correct. That was one of the reasons why uh, they visited them. So another, hey Ewald, good to see you. So another interesting Romania fact, um, believe it or not, Romania is actually the only Latin speak, uh, only country in Eastern Europe to speak a Latin language. Yes, Romanian is Latin, well enough. This means it's within the same family group as, um, as French, Spanish, Portuguese, and Italian. That's something a lot of people don't realize. It, it, it's a Latin-speaking country. It makes a lot of, uh, is a Latin-based Europe. Considered that every other nature around them speaks us one of the Slavic languages, like Bulgarian, Serbian, or, you know, Hungarian or Ukrainian. So it gives Romanian a very unique language here in it. Pretty cool. And of course, Romanians home to tons of inventions too. Um, Henry Canada, um, he actually worked, uh, he participated, Henry Canada, who by the way, he's world famous. He actually, he made the first modern reaction engine to power an airplane. And he, and he actually worked and flew the plane by a short distance with a modern reactionary engine. He built, uh, he is a massive aviation pioneer here in, in Romania. There's also Nikolai Polescu. He actually discovered insulin and used it to treat diabetes. Um, the pen was invented in 821 by Pietro Ponaru. And finally, and finally, Lazar Indanau was the first person to discover and synthesize amphetamines and invented the modern oil refining method that's used all around the world. So yeah, some interesting facts about Romania. So, turns out Romania definitely is a very underappreciated country in Central and Eastern Europe. Very unappreciated. So yeah, some interesting background about, um, but man, this area is beautiful. Oh, this area is stunning. Oh, this is just beautiful. Yeah, for me, it is very beautiful. I flew this back in October. I love flying through the hills of Transylvania and the Carpathians. Just, it's a great area to fly. Uh, try to keep from going too far into this direction. Just flying this at a decent speed, not too fast, not too slow. I do need I do need to eventually find a way to solve that uh, mic problem with the desktop sound going to the mic. I know that's not a big issue now, but
I'm actually doing my laundry. I'm feeling like being sick country like a tourist. It's definitely pleasant. Thanks, Viper. Oh, thank you, Guy Rush, for coming along on today's stream. It's always great to have you by, and you're welcome anytime you want, uh, Guy Rush. Your truck catch up in the R310. Um, that would be interesting. That should definitely be kind of interesting to see if you can catch up um, as well. that fast, we're going around like 200 knots. Man, look at you guys, that's just, that's just awesome. So we're finally entering into another Romanian city. Um, This is another one, this is the city of Deva. Okay, it's actually been around since 1269, when Stephen V, King of Hungary, mentioned the world castle here in Deva. Um, the automotive, the automotive convert, commerce, construction materials, and power industries are important to the city's economy, even to this day. It, it is also the capital of Hunedoara co uh, County. Um, they built the mighty uh, palace known as uh, of Kalanak, which is one of the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. The city also has a Jew, uh, quite a long Jewish history here since the 1830s but it's known for a strong economy and and more currently today so see you around us queen thanks fiber no worries and guys th thank you for coming along guy rush so over here is, uh this is the city of this here is deva So this area particularly here, uh, behind me, this is actually one of the castles that are supposed to be here in Romania. One of the many castles that dot the landscape here in Transylvania in the region. Yeah, we're following the Budapest night train routes, so that's where we're going here. So let's go circle around the place for a little bit. Just doing some good old plan.
so I'm gonna talk to you guys about uh, Sunday. So Sunday we are doing um, a city tour flight. Um, I'm planning on doing it in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So that will be uh, Sunday stream. Okay, yeah, the external tank just ran out of fuel, so we switched to the other tank. Uh, switching out to the normal one. So yeah, uh, that's my plans for the weekend, is work on the City Tour series for Minneapolis. So this should be pretty cool. So it's, not, it's actually not just Minneapolis though, um, it's gonna be Minneapolis and St. Paul. Yeah, it's beautiful here today. So we're about 226 nautical miles from our destination here to Bucharest, where we're doing quite well for us today. Maybe Rado can do? Yeah, I guess we could Rado can do for today. I think that would be our plan. Since he's really the only one we can be streaming. Yeah, we're, we're in the middle of Romania. So, you guys, I want to ask you guys, I hope 
I wonder if you guys got something majorly planned for the weekend. Um, like I said, I got work on my stuff. But I wonder if you guys have any plans if Microsoft Flight Simulator is actually behaving the way it should. Um, Stream for six hours a few times, watching it at the same time. So let me go over some uh, Firefoot Air stuff. Let's go over this for a sec. So uh, let's go over what Firefoot Air does. So let's go to our virtual airline, FFA. So this is your uh, crew panel page. You can do your airline roster. You can browse routes. So so far, our only routes are to Dub was actually our first economy stream. Um, Dublin to Liverpool, then Liverpool to Bristol, and then um, this one here is from uh, Boston. For those who can't do the company route between Dublin and Liverpool, can go on from Went Weston. So we, we only got three routes. I'm hoping we can unlock more. I'm hoping we can unlock more routes. There's company messages. We don't have that yet. So I had to, there was a pirate rep request. I approved that. We also have human resources, some HR. So we have uh, some human resources stuff. We can see Smith. So yeah, we got a lot of options. Um, let's look at our airline profile, by the way. We call you the king of multitasking. Yeah, he is the king of multitasking, Dougal. I completely agree. So we have 240 pilots, average landing rate negative 253, which is a pretty nice landing rate. Um, we did over 12,000 flights, um, over 10,000 hours of flight time, in a distance of over 3 million miles. You got all the people firefighter have been amazing. We also, in addition to this, have our own achievements. We have our achievements. We have our very own achievements here. We do both single and multi-flight. We've been doing the Africa tour, off the rails. We've been doing a lot of the off the rail stuff. We have the D-Day events. And then we had probably our longest events across the Atlantic. This was our first official event we did. We flew from Boston to Dublin. That was a really cool stream. I hope we get to do more of these big events, I know we're going to have one next week, which is we're going to go across Australia and the East Six. So like I said, you guys should definitely check out Two Tone Murphy. Um, uh, you should definitely check out Two Tone Murphy. But, and also check out his affiliates, Allison Johnson. Check out Allison. That's Allison Johnson's name again. I'm sorry. Is my shadow command not working right now? Oh, I think my shadow command is not working. Yeah, my 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 shadow command's not working right.
Ah, oh, great, my shotgun's not working. Usually. It's weird, my shadow commands are usually not working, which is weird. And and also two cats. Um Anya. I mean this area is just Okay, two cats commands worked. So two cats works, but two John Murphy's and Allison Johnson's things aren't working. That's weird. Both Murph and Allison's shoutouts aren't working. Weird. So, um, so a bit about Romania's information. So let's talk about Romania for a bit. So Romania itself was actually unified in 1859. It declared independence from the Ottoman Empire in 1878. Um, it has a population currently of 19,186,201 people, which put it uh, 81st in the world. Actually, 61st most populous country. Um, its GDP is $707 billion, 37th in the world in total GDP. $36,622, uh, $36,622, 50th in the world per capita. Uh, its area is around 230,397 square kilometers, which puts it in the, the 81st biggest country in the world. It is a unitary single semi presidential republic. Uh, the vast majority of the ethnic group is Romanians, followed by a, a small Hungarian minority, about 6%. 3% per is Romani, and 1.29% are other groups. With, um, with Christianity being the overwhelmingly dominant religion, mainly Eastern Romanian Orthodox Christianity, followed by Protestantism, Catholicism, and uh, irreligion at 6.2%. But yeah, Romania's got a really interesting history. It used to be part of Dacia back in the old days, the Dacians. Then Rome uh, conquered the area and became part of the Roman Empire. And even, in, and even into the Byzantine era. The Hungarians controlled a lot of Transylvania. Byzantine missionaries continued up to the southern part. But the Mongols destroyed large territories of modern day Romania during their invasions. And more than the Ottomans took over much of Romania, especially Wallachia, with Vlad III becoming the medieval world of Wallachia. Then the Holy League expelled a lot of the Ottoman troops from the area, and Transylvania became part of the Habsburgs. Then the Hungarians gained independence in the late latter half of the 19th century. Then Romania got itself involved during World War I on the Entente side, which they got a large portion of land due to the Treaty of Trianon. 
then it became part of the Axis in World War II, but changed sides. Then it became known as the Socialist Republic of Communist Romania during much of the Cold War. Much of it was ruled by the infamous uh, communist leader, dictator Nikolai Ceausescu. And then, then Romania fell during the uh, the revolution, the Romanian Revolution back in the back in 1989, and and Romania is now part of the European Union and NATO. So, and that leads to modern day Romania. So, hey Kaharia, good to see you guys. Check out Kaharia's channel. Uh, she's really awesome, by the way. But Kaharia makes some great content. She's really, really fun. So definitely check out her channel. So yeah, we're flying over Romania today. We're doing uh, like five. Um, I think we're going through, we're close to the town of Medias, I believe. Uh, Medea. So this is the town of Medea. Um, it's the second largest city of Cebu County in Transylvania. It's located in the middle basin of the Mare River. It's and it's famous for its uh, health resort of Bosna, which is rich in mineral water springs, salts, mud, and a special kind of salt. It's had some interesting history. It was part of the Romanians, uh, it was part of the Hungarians during much of Transylvania. Then it was given to the Hungarians back in the night in the 1918. But it was famous for quite a few areas. Um, it is the second major industrial center in the in the county after Cebu from the 14th 19th centuries. Manufacturers and professionals were based on their trades, their own guilds. Then in the 19th century they built lots of factories and all that. And they're best known right now for the production of methane gas because it's home to the largest national gas field in Romania. It's also rich in tourism as it features some of the best preserved historical centers in the country mainly the famous St. Margaret's Church that was built in 1488. And of course, um, this area is also known for wine making too. So the area is kind of famous for that as well. And no, Gaharia, there's no vampires sparkle here in Transylvania. Though you can find a Dracula in Wallachia, in southern Romania. If you look close enough, you'll probably find them. Don't drink and fly, guys. Yeah, do not drink. Speaking about drinkers, I think Romania uh, leads all the countries in, dr in alcohol consumption. There is Medea. Medea. Here's Medea. So there's Medeas. Or Medea. Sorry. But, but why no Draculas? No, there is a Dracula, Kaharia. Um, there actually is a Dracula in Romania. His name is Vlad III of Wallachia. He's Vlad the Third, Dra Dra uh, Vlad Dracula the Third, Vlad the Impaler, an actual real life Dracula, a national hero of Romania, one of the most important rulers of Wallachia, and he absolutely. His, rep his reputation for cruelty is infamous. Even among European leaders, he is infamous for his cruelty. But no sparkle. No, he doesn't sparkle. All he does is bloodshed. Basically bloodshed, bloodshed, and more bloodshed. Okay, next one is going to be um, Sigifora. Sigiora, 
So Siggy Aura um, is located here in the Tavarmar River. It has a population of 28,000 people. It's a very popular tourist destination here in Romania, known for its preserved old, old town. Known as the historic center that's been around since the 12th century. It used to be part of the Hungarian Kingdom until 1918. Um, during the 12th century, a lot of uh, the Transmitting Saxons uh, were invited here by the King of Hungary. Yes, they were Germans, and they settled here in the 12th century. It became a royal center for kings by 1337, and it played a strategic and a commercial role in the edges of Central Europe for several centuries. It became one of the most important cities in the region. With artisans throughout the Holy Roman Empire for settlement, then it became part of uh, the Hungarians. Vlad Dracula was actually lived in exile here, who was the father of, well, Vlad the Impaler. Um, after World War I, it was transferred from uh, the Hungarians to Romania. It's still been here ever since. But it's home to quite a few areas. Of course, there's all sorts of sites. Vlad the Impaler was actually born here, funnily enough. He actually was lived here in the city. But outside of that, there are other people. Johannes Kalpus, a very famous German uh, intellectual musician, was from here. And archaeologist Johann Achner were free, some pretty famous natives around this area. And of course, who could forget the old, um, the old town itself in Tomo's world? Tomo's! It's been a while since you checked out my stream. Good to see you guys check out Tom. Uh, shout out to Tomo's world. He does some quite some content. He's back after a while. You actually follow the railways and the tracks? Yes. I actually, if you look at this fight plan, uh, let me let me show this to you, good old Tomo's. So yeah, we're following the railway. So we're following the railways as close as I came to the original. This is, I did all of this so far, but look at this, we're following the railroads. Literally doing piece by piece of the railroad. So we're following the night train route here in um, in Romania. So we're going through the Carpathians pretty soon into uh, Brav, but Pulte, and we're about to, and we're going to make our stop here at Henry Kanata Airport, um, the main international airport for Budapest, for Bucharest, I mean. So yeah, we're doing, we're doing some pretty cool flights, um, as well. So yeah, we're about to enter into Sigasora. Sigasora. Home for its historical UNESCO World Heritage Site, uh, Historic City Center. So... We're, that's where we're going to be heading to right now. So the historic center features um, an inhabited med medieval uh, citadel. It's also the birthplace of Vlad the Impaler, one of the most famous uh, Romanians of all time, known for his legendary cruelty on the Ottomans. It's also hosted a medieval festival as well. And it's, it's rich in history here in Romania. Yeah, and here's the thing, uh, Telos. We this is Lake Five of Six. We covered through Paris to Strasbourg, so we got to visit all of those places. Strasbourg to Munich, we could visit over Germany. Then we did uh, Munich to Vienna, and then Vienna to uh, Budapest. So now we're entering the second to final leg. So well, here's Sigisora. Beautiful area. Romania is abs. Like this part of Romania is just awesome. I don't really care so much about um, the south, but I think Transylvania, I think, is my favorite region in Romania to explore. Dragon stand didn't tell. Oh, I didn't know about that. Um, I didn't know about that. Yeah, I guess I'm wrong.
So, some interesting facts. Um, Romanian is actually a Romance language, which means it's related to Italian, Spanish, French, and Portuguese. But it's the only one from Eastern Europe, by the way. But it's actually closest are the other Balkan Rom uh, Romance languages, like Aramonian, Istro Romanian, and Magano Romanian, are its closest re uh, language relatives. But there's a lot of Slavic influence in Romanian language, around 10 to 15 percent. Well, because, you know, it's surrounded by the other Slavic countries. But there's also other influences, like its own Balkan languages, uh, German, Greek, Hungarian, and Turkish language. But yeah, Romania is unique among all the uh, Romans. When I, was young, when I was younger, I had an idea to drive a car through this Orient Express route. When I'm older, I still didn't do it. Well, at least you can do this here in the flight simulator. So we're... And speaking of which, Thomas, um, I'm going to be doing the Route 66 journey next. And we'll be following the road. We're going to follow I six uh, Route 66 there. Um, all throughout... Uh, our trip. Oh, and by the way, Thomas, I want to show you this. Um, I don't think you've ever seen this. Look at the livery for this thing. It is the Firefly Air Super Marine Spitfire. This is probably one of my favorite liveries that's done for the virtual airline. And the VA's done tons of really cool livery. But this is taking things to a new standard. Gear kicks on Route 66. Yep. Yep, and we're going to fall through the entire road, too. Yeah, Murph did a Route 66, but Murph's Route 66 is, um... He did from California to Chicago. Well, the one we're doing is based off FS Hub because we're doing achievements. We're going to go from Chicago all the way down to um, Santa Monica. But I'm going to do it differently than Murph did. Um, whereas Murph went around the area of Route 66, we're going to fly over the entirety of the road. We're going to literally follow the road. We're going to do some IFR flying. I follow roads. And, unlike Murph, my stream is going to be full of chocolate research. I'm going to be telling you all the places around Route 66. All the landmarks through the routes. We'll be discussing some of the, um, the history of Route 66, the landmarks through each of it, and each of the cities. And I'll tell you all about it. I'll not just tell, I will teach you all about it, too. So y'all can come, come away. Holy crap, I didn't even know about this before. I mean, as the MERS resident researcher, it's kind of my job.
Yeah, it's a beautiful aircraft. Yeah, the Spitfire is amazing. The Spitfire Spit is incredible. But this livery, this livery just takes the beauty of this plane to a whole nother level. It, it, it is a whole nother level. And you do this by joining Firefly Air. So, let me go ahead and uh, give the command. And by the way, I am the senior uh, airline pilot. The senior commander who flew by far the most miles. And speaking of which, if you guys wanted to see um, the miles I put up for the airline, um, for my advanced stats. So I flew for uh, advanced stats for the airline. So I flew most out of Louisville, I flew 317 flights in the U.S., I mostly fly. So career highlights, I flew over 1,400 flights, 739 flight hours with the Firefly Air Group, um, 232,000 like miles with the Firefly Air, and 26 different achievements for the group. Yeah, I did tons of uh, flight work. And, uh, I gotta go. Uh, twist, turn, 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 three Gs, three Gs, four... He's... We're about 118 uh, miles out from our final stop here in, um, in Bucharest. So we only have 118 more miles to go. And we'll make our stop there, and we'll get prepared for the second following of the journey. So, by the way, guys, I I do want to talk about this. So, on FS Hub, the achievement, um, the final leg takes us to Istanbul. But, you see, it's not the Istanbul from the sim they want to stop at. The one they want to stop at is Nima Tango Fox uh, Mike. But the issue is, that's not available in the base sim. Because this is actually the new Istanbul International Airport. But in order for it to count, um, um, you, you have to land there. But the issue is, there is a freeware scenery for it. Um, the major issue is, it crashes my system. And if you guys know me, I, I like to not have too much scenery stuff, so I don't get to have those crashes. So I wonder how that's going to work. Should I take, should I take like something like the Pelican, land vertically on top of the airport, count the leg, and then land back at uh, Ataturk Airport? I mean, your Xbox people would actually, this would be one of the benefits if you're on Xbox. You could just do the manual pirate and get that completed. But for me, So, I don't know how that was going to work. So I just want to ask you guys how you think I guys should do it in the chat. If you guys in the chat know if there's any other solutions to the problem. So, that's just a, that's just a question I was thinking of uh, about the trip. How should I handle that?
everyone can do everybody can do a manual pie rep. Or can't we? Okay, we can do a manual pie rep, but I want to actually fly to the journey. So I'm thinking about taking the Pelican, land of the airstrip. We could do a manual pirate, but it wouldn't be right for me to finish the journey. So this place right here is Philadelphia. Um, this settlement is, is 15 kilometers away from the city of Bra... Uh, Bra... Bra... Um... It's located, um, it has, it, it has a population of around, uh, it has a pretty small population. This village has been long believed to be a medieval fortress by the Tatang Knights. However, more recent studies show that the fortress was actually built by the local community. Most of this population is around Romanians, followed by Hungarians and Romani. The name of the village comes from the Hungarian word Oda, the clan fortress. But in the German name, it's actually known as Marienburg, named after the fortress of the Virgin Mary. However, the fortress was damaged during the battle against the uh, between the Hungarians and Brasovians, and the fortress was used as a granary until 1838, when a major earthquake damaged it. What is a pirate? Um. So Pyra, um, let me show you. Um, let me go ahead. So here it is. Let me go. Let me go. Airlines. Fire player. So we actually have Pyreps. Manual Pyra. Click this. So a Pyra, if you if you're able to use the client software for the lane rate monitor, which by the way is this thing. If you can't use this client for PC, especially if you're on Xbox. This is for you Xbox people. Um, you can, or your simulator has crashed and your data was lost, you can do a Pyra. Um, and you can do your aircraft type, your call sign, your departure IKO, your arrival IKO, and your remarks. And then you can just submit a Pyra. It's great for those who have either are playing on Xbox which means, which is rare because most uh, VA services will require PC, but this is one that you can use on Xbox, which is a huge advantage. But you can actually submit it, which is very helpful for a lot of you Xbox people. Out there. Now we're now now we're going to go ahead and talk about. Um, uh, it is actually the city of Bravov. So Bravov is um, Romania's seventh most populous city with a population of 253,000, 200 people. Located in the central part of the country, it is surrounded by the Southern Carpathians and part of the historical region of Transylvania. Historically, it was the center of Burzenland, used to be dominated by the Transylvanian Saxons, and a significant commercial hub on the trade roads between Austria and Turkey. It's also where the national anthem of Romania was first sung. This Patate Roman was sung. It's got a long history as some of the oldest settlements date back to 9500 BCE, found by archaeologists from the latter half of the 19th century. It became a major role for the Transylvanian Saxons in, in the 12th century as well. In 1689, a great fire destroyed the entirety of the walled city, uh, and, re and its rebuild lasted for several decades. Besides the German population, there's also Romanian Bulgarian populations that live around here. Um, during the First World War, the Romanian army occupied it, and troops entered around the city as well towards the town square. Following the collapse of Austria Hungary, it's really been annexed into Romania. It also is home to quite a few of the religious Jews as well. Uh, 
Um, economically, it was part of major plane, airplane parts, but now it's been placed as heavy industry. And there are many sites, but the most famous is the Black Church, a celebrated Gothic site that's debuted since 1477. There's also other ones too, like different gates, factors, and more, and also Brand Castle. Though some people claim to be the home birthplace of the home of Dracula. Well, not, not the twinkly sparkling Dracula, the actual real life Dracula by the third. Hey, Eagle Costello, good to see you. Oh, Pyrub is a power report. Yeah, Pyrub is a power report. So here's the city of um, Breitbaugh. Now, there is add-on scenery for this, but it's like many gigs, and I don't want to download that. So there is the city of Brava. And at top of the hill should be the iconic um, Black Church. Man, this is just stuck. This is stunning. This whole place is just really cool. It's got lots of historic buildings and stuff, so we're gonna go ahead and follow this direction. Yeah, I put a lot, of, if you guys notice, I put tons of work in my flight plans. I'm not as crazy as Pilot Peely is. And by the way, you guys should definitely check out Peely's channel. Let me give him a hint, I know he's not here. But Pilot Peely makes probably some absolutely incredible flight plans. But I know that my flight plans are really, really good. I put a lot of work into these flight plans. I put over historical monuments and So we're now entering the Southern Carpathian Mountains. So we're now entering the Southern Carpathian Mountains. Um it's part of the Greater Carpathian Mountain chain which goes through a lot of Central Europe, like Czechia, Austria, Slovakia, Poland, Serbia, and more. These are the Southern Carpathians, known as the Transylvanian Alps. They are a group of mountain ranges located here in Southern Romania. Uh, there's the highest peaks. Um, the highest peaks are Molde Moldovo Peak, which is the highest point in Romania, over 2,500 meters, or 8,340 feet. Um, but there's four different mountain groups separated by the river valleys, including the Busi G Mountains group, the Fargas Mountain groups, which is some of the tallest peaks, the Paranong Mountain groups, and the Retezat Golden Elm Mountains. Whoa, look at, look at, look at, look at, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Yeah, I should, don't forget my flight plans too. Oh yeah, yeah, your flight plans too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the flight plans. Yeah, the shadow and grid flight points too, but yeah, this area. Oh yeah, we're gonna get to the real scenic part of the flight. Oh, Transylvania. This is stunning, guys. This is absolutely stunning. Oh, what are my specs? Hey, Captain Early, good to see you here. Welcome aboard, Captain Early. And friends of all! It's good to see you guys here, too. 
it's great to have you guys here. We're in Transylvania. We're actually coming our way down to Bucharest for leg number um for leg number five or six of the of the Orient Express. We're actually here during in the middle of the range of the Southern Carpathians. But yeah, this is just stunning. I mean, look at the mountains. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah, I mean, people don't ever give Romania the respect it deserves as a, as a place to fly. I mean, the entirety of the Transylvania and Carpathians, just awesome to fly over. I don't have my specs, though. Uh, okay, my PC laptop is a Lenovo Legion Wi-Fi 40i. Um, my, I run a Logitech C922 webcam and mic. Uh, my graphics card's a NVIDIA GeForce. But yeah, that's what I made my specs. I probably need to make a specs command for it. But yeah, the scenery is just awesome. I completely agree. It is awesome. Like, this part of Transylvania is just... It's cool. Like, this is probably my favorite part of Romania, just going through the mountains. I mean, I could do a whole series of mountain ranges. Pfizer, Everest, and all that. So I hope you guys are doing well today, uh, both both my good friend Cap, uh, friend All and Captain Early. Hope you guys are doing wonderful. Do not if I if I crash, I would ruin the I would have to start the flight all over again. You guys, it'll track my landing. the mountains. So, um, we just went past Sanella, unfortunately, but Sanella, um, uh, we passed that one early. But this town and mountain resort, um, was located in Pavola County, named after the Sanella Monastery. King Carol I Romania built his summer residence here, Pe Pele Castle. It was, it's also a very popular skiing and hiking destination among the tourist landmarks on the castle, Pelosaur Castle, the Sanal Monastery Casino. Unfortunately, we flew past it, unfortunately. I apologize for that. We just passed right through it. But, but it's an absolutely beautiful area. Well, like I said, this area, I guess I was so, I was so engrossed in this area. That's all I did. That we're also just flying through this area so fast. Now the next city we're going to visit is um, let me let me get my Romanian properly. 
Um, it is Kipina. Kipina is um, located in Provoca County. Uh, it's the north of the county seat of Cuyosti. Its, its existence was first attested in 1503, located in the historical region of Minita. It was formerly a customs point of the trade between Transylvania and Wallachia. It developed in the end of the 19th century, in the beginning of the 20th century, as an oil extraction and processing center. And between 1897 and 1898, it was, it was the site of the largest oil refinery in Europe. Yes, actually, Romania has oil. Contrary to what you believe, Romania was actually an oil producing country. Um, it was. It used to be one of the largest in all of Europe, though enough, um, in terms of oil. There's Campina. Campina's actually just dead ahead. So there it is. 49 nautica miles out. So thank you guys so much for going along on today's flight. I really appreciate you guys. I know I know there isn't much going on, so I appreciate you guys coming to my channel and, and just being around and hanging out with me. I really appreciate all of you, as always. Just beautiful. So once we visit Capino, we'll be visiting our last city for today. Um, this is um, Poyosti, I believe. Let me let me see if that's the right spell. It is Plafti. Um, it is the city and county seat of Prahova County, Romania, part of the historic region of Mineta. Um, it grew during the 17th century on a estate bought by Michael the Brave, um, who was the Prince of Wallachia during that time, from the local landlords. And it, it accelerated a lot thanks to industrialization, as it was the home of the world's first systematic petroleum refinery in the world, operating in, in 1856 and 1857. Following massive explosion of oil deposits in the area, it, it, it was earned the nickname of the capital of Black Gold. Yes, people forgot Romania is oil. In the present, a lot of its economic activity is based on oil processing, as it has four large oil refineries and other industries. It's also an important transport hub of the region, linking the capital of the regions of Transylvania and Moldavia. The city also has direct access to the Prahova Valley, which includes some of the most important alpine tourist areas in Romania. So it was a major part of oil refinery as well. It was badly damaged after the 1940 earthquake. It still functioned as oil reserve. And then the Allies bombed it repeatedly during the Second World War. Following the war, the new Congress regime nationalized the oil industry and helped repair the damage to the place. So a very important um, industrial city here in Romania. But I mean, so that is our last city for, for this afternoon's flight. Everything's been running very smooth. So, so now, once we turn here, we only have 38 more nautical miles left to go.
do a bit of loop just to have some fun. The Spitfire can definitely do aerobatics. I mean, after all, this was a fighter. He can definitely do some aerobatic maneuvers. Not nearly as good as, let's say, the extra or that new uh, third party stunt plane, but this is still very acrobatic for a fighter plane. The only thing that would be better is if they, if they can make a livery for the clip wing Spitfire. If if can, if I can get Kazooie to do a livery with the Spit as uh, the uh, the clip wing, that would be even better. Oh wait, Dougal's Dougal's in the chat. I can't say clip wing Spitfire unless. So there is Poyasti. Um. The capital of black gold in a very important city for oil and all that. Yeah, yeah, but me is not a real spit. <laughs> Clipsmith is faster. Yeah, it, it, it's faster and it's more maneuver and it had better maneuver as a much better roll rate. But it but I agree with Dougal though, it's not as pretty. in the external tank. Yep, I just... The, exter uh, the, the tank has now been jettisoned. So, yep. And, and then we're finally going to talk about the final IMR for today's trip. And that is Romania's International Airport. Um, Henry Kwanda International Airport. Uh, Lima, Romeo, Oscar, Papa. Um, it is one of the two airports serving Bucharest, the other one being Ariel Biasu International Airport, which no longer serves international traffic. It's named after the iconic Romanian flight pi uh, pioneer Henry Koanda, the builder of the, of the Koanda 1910 aircraft, and he also discovered the Koanda effect of fluidics. Prior to May 2004, its official name was Bucharest Altopini International Airport. It serves currently as the headquarters for Taram, the country's national airline, uh, the flag carrier, but it also serves as base for the low cost airlines, including Animal Wings, Blue Air, Ryanair, and Wizz Air, along with charter airlines like Air Bucharest and Gould Air. The mil there's also a military airport because um, it's also used by the 90 airlift Lotala airlift base of the Romanian Air Force. This airport has actually been around since after World War II. Uh, it was used by the German Air Force Air Base. Then until 1965, it became a major air base for the Romanian Air Force. And then uh, it became an international airport, um, became a big part of the 70s all the way to the 90s, when it became the main international airport for Bucharest. It features a single terminal with three main facilities. There's also a walkway with shops. And the total floor area of these areas is around 86,000 square meters. There's currently in development a new terminal building at the eastern end of the current location. And that's gonna probably be built by 2025 to 2030. But this airport serves a lot of destinations, not just in Romania, but also abroad.
it's important to plug connections um, as well. So, so currently it serves 129 destinations in all 34 countries, most of them around Europe, but also in the Middle East, like Tel Aviv, Amman, Doha, and Dubai. The longest flight is actually from Bucharest to Terralife Airport in the Canaries, around 2,597 miles. And it wrecks some guy's house. Yeah, it did wreck their house. But yeah, these are some airport routes. So Bucharest goes through all around Europe. So so basically, I want to talk about Henry Canada for a bit. So I never mentioned in the slides, but he was a Romanian inventor, aer aeronautics uh, pioneer, and experimental, of the, experimental aircraft, the Canada 1910. Described by him in the 1950s as the world's first jet, a controversial plan that is supported by some and supported and disputed by others. He invented a lot of other great devices and he discovered the Kanada effect. So he was born in Bucharest, uh, was the second child of a large family. His father was a math professor, while his mother was a daughter of a French physician. But his aviation uh, he built his first plane under the workshop of Gianni Caproni, the founder of the Caproni Aircraft Manufacturing Company, and he built the Canada in 1910. That air and that plane was powered by a four-cylinder piston engine uh, to power a rotor and compressor, which was intended to propel the craft by a combination of suction at the front and airflow at the rear instead of a propeller. Some people thought it was incapable of flight. But it turns out this thing actually flew, funnily enough, for a couple of uh, flew. Afterwards, he, he would have worked on um, his stuff as well. But he made a lot of different discoveries. Um, he invented his experimental plane powered by a ducted fan. Um, he also invented an aircraft powered by two engines driving a single propeller. He invented a new decorative material for construction, Beton Boys. And of course, he discovered um, offshore drilling, or a system for offshoring, but his most famous discovery is the Kanada effect. And the Kanada effect, basically for those who don't know, is a tendency of a fluid jet to stay attached to a convex surface. It turns out he discovered back in 1910, but it wasn't discovered until around the 1936. So it showed the entire of the Kanata effect um, itself. I'm gonna put that in stream length, by the way. Um, yeah, it's definitely a very interesting um, discovery made. But there's tons of applications for it. Um, for high lift devices on aircraft, um, meaning the wing can be bent down when using flaps and all that, and it results in aerodynamic lift. It's used for a lot of uh, programs on helicopters, jets, for me, y'all. And it's not just for aviation either, it's used for air conditioning, to cardiovascular medicine, to meteorology, and even Formula One racing has used this effect before. You picked the runway? Oh yeah, um, runway, I'm going to pick... Uh, I'm gonna go 08 right. 08 right is the runway for today's landing. So, welcome to... We're just outside of Bucharest, guys. So, the flaps. Get the land gear out. Unfortunately, I do not have Sim Toolkit Pro loaded in, just because um, that, that, that if you guys remember, uh, that thing caused a lot of issues on my stream on Wednesday. That's the reason I didn't do leg four um, 
last Wednesday. So yeah, thank you guys so much for coming on today's journey. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, for all just found us uh, a sound alert. Uh, this is gonna get interesting. Seven. Now, here's the thing. I am more difficulty taken off from a Spitfire than land this thing, but I I'm actually get pretty good land in this. Yeah, thank you guys so much for coming today. somewhere to park. So we're in Dougal and Ewold, uh, about to land. Thank you guys so much for coming along on today's flight. So welcome to Bucharest. Welcome to Bucharest, Romania. We're just outside the city. I was thinking about touring the city, but I decided, you know what? Um, we're going to tour the city tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow, next Wednesday. That will be the finale. I still, I still want to question, the only question I still remained is since that add-on series for Istanbul is causing me CTDs, I want to know how, I want to ask you guys how should I probably handle it. I could just send a manual pyre up and remake the journey land at Istanbul airport. I could do that. And I'll still get the achievement and we can still land there, but I don't have to worry about the CTDs. Since I know that's caused me and quite a few other people who have the scenery kind of issues. So. Just trying to find a good solution to the whole issue. And she's off. Oh. Wow, guys, and that's it. So, guys, welcome to Henry Konada Airport in Budapest, and not Bucharest, Bucharest, actually. So guys, thank you so much. So that's like five of six. I can't believe this, guys. We're actually... So thank you guys so much for today's journey. We had a fantastic flight today. I know there was I know I had a hiccup earlier in the stream, but everything else worked better. So thank you guys so much for the stream. So I think we need to find a raid. Um, so let's see who we can raid for today's stream. There's quite a few options. Obviously, okay, do can be a good raid target. Jesus F15. Um, oh, I think I know who we're gonna raid. And I haven't raided him in a while, by the way. I think we should raid Lilo stream. I think for today, fly Lilo. 
I think we should definitely check out Lilo's stream. Lilo is definitely an awesome person. And I think we should definitely give Lilo red. Like, as, as much as I like to read okay and do, I think Lilo, being a smaller streamer, I think we can help Lilo out. Lilo's awesome. He's doing a flight event today. So let's go ahead and raid Fly Lilo stream. So guys, thank you guys so much for the uh for everything today. Um Hey Mr. Sonic, good to see you. How do I tame this plane for MS FS2020? Um actually let me answer his question first. Mr. Sonic, if you want to get this plane, um you can get this from the Flying Iron website. But you can also get this plane from the marketplace of MSFS. It's but this particular plane is uh, paper from Flying Iron. You can get this from if you're on PC, you can get it's best to get it from the website. But it's also available for Xbox on the Microsoft Flight Sim X, uh, marketplace. So yeah, that will solve your question, Mr. Sonic. I hope that solves your question. Um. But yeah, let's go. Let me go ahead and um, uh, let's go back and let's let's raid Lilo for today. I hope you guys stay stay in the chat so we can stay in for the raid. We need no problem, Mr. Sarge. Thank you so much. So guys, so for my following plans for the week, we'll be heading to the Twin Cities in Minneapolis and St. Paul on Sunday for Neuro Round State Tour, and week six is next Wednesday. We're gonna wrap up our journey from bucharest to istanbul so guys thank you so much and i hope to see you all on sunday take care everyone bye